The House of the Soul Lay by Dorothy L. Sayers, read for LibriVox.org by Joyce Martin. One. I have forgotten my name and the name of my nation. Yea, I know alone I have lost myself and have wandered far astray from the land where the magical fir trees grow, farther than far Cathay, farther than fair Atlantis or the hills of Tirfaton or the isles of Bran and Malduin, or the Isle of Avalon, from the city built on the rivers, where the willow branches sway, to a quiet tune all night to the moon, and dream in the sun all day, where the gardens drink at the water's brink, and the poppies dip to the water wan, and the roses fall from the hot red wall like showers of light on the water gray. Now and again by night, when the sun's last ray has crawled under the skyline and I hear the waves array, march clip-clap after me, driving me up the bay that is ringed with cliffs and foam grit and the bats wheel out anon. Sometimes I half remember, and again the word is gone, and I know that I am lonely, and the night and the sea and the spray, unrestingly, unhastingly, march on with no delay and the sheer height of the cliff's white sands like the base of the great white throne and i seem to be left with god bereft of any wisdom to plead or pray two someone has leased me a house that is huge and dark and old and filled with other men's dust i do not remember bargaining but i pay the price in gold year after year a heavy price and pay it because I must. Its rafters are full of mold and its bars of rust. The slates fly from the roof at every gust of the wind over the wold. I should like to search my house if only I were bold and scrape the mildew crust from cobweb-curtained corners that are quaintly shaped and cold and heaped with curious hangings. Yet I have but little lust to find what may not be told or ever discussed hid in a closet, maybe, or carefully thrust into a curtain's fold. 3. I am afraid of my house, and I wish I knew who those other tenants were that my landlord leased it to. I know that they have been there, for sometimes I find a shoe or a ribbon for the hair. There's a grandfather clock on the stair and an odd little bust on a bracket for which I don't very much care. They have left long since what matter to you, true. But I wish my house was bare and perfectly clean and new, for the hollowed seat of a chair or a rod wretched askew gives me the creeps, and I dare hardly breathe in an air so thick with the dust of those who once were here and who now are where. Four. One day the storm was loud, the clouds clung thick and red, close to the windows. The sky glowed like a copper pan, the thunder muttered and cracked, the lightning leapt from its bed like a beast, the rain ripped down like a curtain of iron thread, and every nook of the house was dim and strange and dread, and odd things shuffled and squeaked in the corners, and queer feet ran hither and thither. The light was split, furled and unfurled, like a fan, that was a day of God's ban and it suddenly came to my mind that the house was inhabited by people that hid themselves, and I swore to seek and scan and find those flittering feet and the voices and what they said, but the lightning flashed and shook me and drizzled all my head, and I searched each room and closet, and I sped and sped and sped through turret and tower and corridor till trembling I began to open the dungeon doors, and lo, in the deepest an old, old man that sat and sang and span. 5. And do you know, I could not find him again, not once, though I sometimes fancied I heard a strain with a sort of humming refrain, and I'd tiptoe down the staircase close to the wall to deaden my footfall, and the singing would rise and wane and the flame of my secret candle shrink and shoot up smoky and tall. So, very quietly creeping, I'd suddenly gain 
a little low iron-bound door, and not in vain this time, I would whisper, my pain. Then I'd fling the door back, quick, with a cheery call. Silence, nothing at all. Now, is it not wholly plain that there was something of wizardry, mystical, magical? 6. I hate the clock. It first says tick, it then says talk. I hear days flick, I see years flock. The whole world rock. Had I the trick, I'd like to lock time with a block to make it stick. Hick, hike, hock. Hock, hike, hick. Each at each knock drops like a brick, sticks like a stock. Just at the shock, caught in the nick, therefore the mock of that red clock turned Peter sick. 7. My house upon the landward side looks out toward the town. Pleasant it is all day to bide high in the thin air rarefied, and gaze delighted down on busy folks that drive and ride and run and crawl and hop and stride like beetles black and brown. Stiff soldiers stalk, kings pace in pride, and statesmen stoop and frown. The women strut and mince and glide, priests bustle round at Easter tide, all but their boots, their broad hats hide. The wind blows out their gown. Tramps slouch and spit, boys jump and slide. They look all head, how I deride, king, lady, priest, and clown. 8. My house is haunted, and hell enchanted by a conjurer vaunted. Hear them tripping, chattering, scattering, imps undaunted. Here they come battering, pattering, skipping, dancing and prancing, gloating and glancing, bawling, brawling, leering and lipping, snarling and nipping, clinging and gripping, winding and whirling, twisting and twirling, sliding and sprawling askew and slipping, and they revel vitrolic, diabolic like a devil with a colic, topping, ripping. Oh, the smashing, and oh, the crashing, oh, the hashing, and slashing, and sniping. My goods, if I could give you a thrashing, send you home with a good sound whipping. Be steel brood of a brutal mood, when the devil and I lay kissing and clipping, now curtsying, dipping, sweating, and dripping, heel and towing, to and froing, winking, blinking, bibing, and sipping. How you frolic, alcoholic! How you rollick! Me, a wretched melancholic, shaming, stripping. 9. This was the song that, like a distant bell, exceeding light and thin, came at the dawning after nights of hell from far away within. Maybe from that unsearchable dark cell it did begin, where that old man, whose name I cannot tell, doth sit and spin. Empty the winds that can the clouds dispel, and silence after din. Water has virtue, heats of wine to quell, fatigue gives pause to sin, and rest seemed good to Adam when he fell, as to his kin. Oh well it is for me, oh well, oh well, this way to win. 10. Yesterday, looking through my window bars, the whole sad sea was changed resplendently by one great ship that sailed with raking spars into the sunshine, and her masts were three, red, splendid banners, and the wind flew free. Her blown white sails were thick with tempest scars. Twelve blazoned shields along her side had she, and round about her prow the name of the Trinity. By night she lit her lanterns from the stars, and on her decks held mighty jubilee, with wine poured out from strange Assyrian jars. O oh, sirs, I cried, whither with such good glee sail ye for merchandise or mighty wars? The captain said, Come down, take ship with me. Then with this song we weighed and sailed across the sea. 9. We that speed on the shifting floor where the green waters vary, with many a song and stroke of oar, sail for the chase of the silver boar that's horned and hoofed and hairy. His eyes are bright, his bristles hoar, and hung with golden bells galore. Oh, many a time he flees and flies across the uplands airy, and fierce he is, and fleet he is, and light and weight and wary, and bravely framed in fairy lore. 
by many a hunter sought of yore. The dark salt sea is bitter and frore, the winds of comfort cherry, but though the dretching sleet downpour, and Mandwadane's green steeds roar, we are not solitary. For Rhiannon's green songbirds soar about our heads for evermore, with the first stroke for Jesus King, the second stroke for Mary, the third stroke for the Trinity, the fourth for the land of fairy. By one, by two, by three, by four, we reach the wonderful weirded shore. 12. I am sailing to seek my name and the name of my nation, nay, for I know the land that bore me where the marvelous sea beasts play, where are silver bells on the blackthorn boughs and golden bells on the may, where the magical boar abideth and the birds of Rhiannon, and Adam and Eve and Enoch and Arthur and Prester John. I have learnt the name of my city and learnt to ask my way. And the whole ship's crew are my fellows, too, and a merry crew be they. All day we sail with a favoring gale, or gird ourselves as the storm draws on, and strive and cope and rudder and rope, and sing aloud in the loud affray. And other things I have learnt, and the first is still to say to myself, O oh, unlearned fool, and also fool be gay! O oh, well for the glorious chase of God, and well for the hot assay! Well for the noise of water, for the hills where the sun has shone, for the trees on the far horizon and the chart we may not con. Well for the terrible mere-wolf and the caves where the witch-wife lay, till we touched her brows where the fir-trees stand, and all we witless wanderers wone. God bless the fools and the wise in schools. Et gloria tibi domine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.